Hi, my name is Aiden, and today's screencast is gonna be on a somewhat different topic than what than we usually have. I'm gonna talk about Windows Communication Foundation, more specifically about distributed transactions. Uh, so I'm in the middle of recording my new Pluralsight course, Angular Material Fundamentals, but I figured let's do a screencast on this since I ran across this problem when working for a client this week. And I think it's a pretty serious and an important issue, and I think uh, people should be aware about the behavior of VCF, uh, because we certainly wasn't aware that we had this bug until we accidentally came across it. So let's take a look at what the problem really is. So what we have in front of us here is a console application that's going to create a transaction and we are passing in an option here telling it that transaction scope async flow option is enabled. And that simply means that since we are awaiting a call here on the first line, we, we want the transaction to still be alive after awaiting. So just bear with me when I say that if you want to await a call and you have a transaction and you expect it to still live after awaiting a call, then you better pass in this uh, option to transaction scope. So what we do here in this example is we deliberately throw an exception or we call to a service that's going to throw an application exception uh, just to demo uh, what happens. So by throwing an exception, we won't complete a transaction scope, meaning we would like the things that happen in call async to be rolled back. Uh, so if you take a look at the server-side implementation, that's really simple. Uh, we have a service that's going to have a service proxy to another instance of the same proxy. Since the instance context mode is set to per call, it's going to be a distributed transaction since we have transaction with us into this call. Uh, so we call a, another method in the service called write async and we do that two times and I'm gonna show you why that is important. So what write async does, it simply writes to a database and saves the changes. Right, so let's try to follow the logical flow here. We're gonna call, uh, call this method call async and we're gonna enter the call async uh, method here on the server side and we're going to write to the database and we're going to write another row to the database and then this call will finish and we're going to call throw async in throw async we simply throw a new application exception so except these two rows that were written in the previous call to be rolled back right but with the following code it won't be so let's take a look at why if we press f5 here and we are currently watching trans transaction.current. We can see that we have a transaction here. Let's have a break on the server side as well. So we're gonna get asked if we want to attach it, the debugger and we want to attach. Uh, so we have a transaction with us. We can take a look at the identifiers. We have transaction information, we have the distributed identifier and the local identifier, right? So when we press F10 here, we can see that our transaction current became null, which isn't good, which means that this next call will be ran outside the transaction. So if we just let this go, this goes uh, fine, right? But the second service call through an, through an, uh, through an exception and our program is done, we are writing done, let's come back here to program.cs, uh, by throwing this exception here we don't want to see any rows in the database now, but if we come here into management studio we can see that we actually wrote uh, one post here uh, which isn't the desired behavior, so this is no good at all, so let's clear the database so what was dangerous here was that we accidentally persisted things that should have been rolled back. And the reason we didn't notice anything is that if you take a look in our, at our service contract, 
we have that transaction flow option is allowed on right, right async, right? So we, you don't have to have a transaction within. So we wrote without actually having transaction. And sometimes you have allowed because it's not always mandatory to have to have a transaction. How we came across this was by accidentally we called a service that had the mandatory option set instead. And then we got an exception and when debugging what really happened, uh, I could see that uh, the transaction was null when we uh, actually required a transaction. But this is pretty common to have allowed because sometimes you come in with, with a transaction and sometimes you don't. Um, it really depends on your application. Uh, but uh, uh, how we fix this is simply by applying the same uh, the si same kind of code to the service side as to the client side. So if we come here to the service now and up in call async, we need to, or at least not the first option, but we need to pass uh, the transaction scope async flow option enabled in an inner transaction scope here. And then to do, for this to work, we're going to need to complete this inner trans transaction. So what will happen now, we'll still have a transaction after the first, after first call. Uh, and we'll have it still in the second call. We're gonna complete this inner, inner transaction. And if we come back to program here, we're gonna still call throw async, but we'll see that this time we won't persist anything since the entire transaction will be rolled back. So by simply committing this inner transaction, won't complete the outer com a transaction. It will still be rolled back. So if we press F5 now, Uh, so let's hit F5 again, continue executing, and let's attach the debugger, right? Uh, so we can see we have a transaction now, and after the first call, just press F10, it takes a while for some reason, right? So we still have transactions, so that's good, and it's the same transaction. We're going to complete this one, but then we get an error in the next call. If we take a look at, whoops, that's Camtasia. Uh, then we can, then we are done. So let's switch to Management Studio and see we have we haven't persisted anything. Uh, so the fix for this is to simply apply the same pattern on the server side as on the client side. Uh, but th this might be quite cumbersome to keep writing uh, an out a transaction like this each in every service method that may or may not use await in the future because this is a really simple error to do. You simply forget that, all right, uh, we, we're not going to have a transaction after awaiting this call and we need a transaction. Uh, so what I tried to do uh, was to create a, a me message inspector uh, for Windows Communication Foundation and attached it as a service behavior uh, where I, uh, after we receive the request on the service side, I create a scope uh, with that option, passing in that, and before we send a reply, we try to uh, complete the, the inner transaction. But this doesn't seem to work. It doesn't have the same effect as doing it in the service. So uh, our solution uh, for that client was simply to make sure to have this using statement uh, if you are calling to, uh, to another service and if you expect to have a transaction scope left after awaiting a call. Right, so after closing this bug, uh, I went to Stack Overflow. I'm gonna link to the question uh, in the description and uh, posed the same question and actually got a really good comment on the question. So it hasn't been answered yet. So if you have a, a better answer, please provide one. Uh, so as I said, a bit of a different topic for today. And I hope it helps somebody out, uh, out there. And maybe you even realize that you are doing this without knowing it. All right, so that was all for now. I'm going to go back to editing my Angle Material Fundamentals course. Make sure to check it out on Pluralsight. Bye.